So, Father, I thank you so much that you freely gave your son just for me. I thank you so much that he laid his life down that I'll be free. I thank you so much that he laid his life down that others would be free, that the sick would be healed, that the lame may walk and the dead will be raised. I thank you, Father, that we could be reconnected with you through your Son, Jesus Christ, that lives in me. Thank you, Father, the Holy Spirit that's already within me that rises up the moment that I connect with Jesus Christ every single day, that we have partnership, we have a relationship that's so, so intact with this supernatural world that the world does not have a clue what's going on, but through you, Jesus Christ, and me, that I get to connect with those to share the love of Jesus Christ through them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I want, let, I want to let you know that Jesus is so passionate about you right about now. He's so passionate about what you're going through. He's passionate about you. He's passionate about the understanding that you need. He's passionate about everything and every circumstance that you're all ever going to rise up against that's coming your way. Everything. He's so passionate about it. He loves the fact that you're going to partner with him. He loves the fact that you're going to have such a relationship and a whoopee time through everything. And I want to encourage those that that are struggling with partners that haven't yet received or you, you've you got them in your prayer for them to receive that don't know you. I want to encourage you. I'm going to share this real quick. On yesterday, yesterday, Saturday, yesterday, we're just coming out of the house and one of Jan's friends popped by with the, the children to get something. And I could see and they're standing in the kitchen they're talking and there's a sl- just a small movement in her arm. And I was thinking, there's something that's not right there, Lord. I know it's not right. Like, you know, come on, Holy Spirit, let's bring forth this opportunity just to show how good you are. And just as she's on the way out, I, ask, I asked, I said, is something wrong with your shoulder? And she's like, oh, yeah, I don't know what I've done, but I really, I, I really clattered it or damaged it last night, and oh, I'm struggling to move it. And my approach was... Like on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, like, how bad is it? And out of nowhere, this voice says, 50. And it was Jan. Jan already turned around and she could see how much pain she was in. She didn't shy away from the fact that what I was doing. She was encouraging me. She was encouraging me. She's like, oh, kids at 50. So I'm outside, Lord. Oh, this is going to be so good. Not only is she going to see it with one of her friends, like, you know, God's going to touch her. Anyway, God just smashed it. He does what he does best. But it was the fact that, like, not only did she receive something, like, I received something that I've been praying for so long, and I know it's just, it's, you know, God's just doing his thing, and he's doing it in his time, and, and it was just, oh, it's so amazing. I was just like... I'm like, yeah, you know, this is so good. Like, I know that you're not forgotten, and I know that he's, we're going to see it right through to the end, but for those that are praying for your partners, just keep praying. Just love on them the same way Jesus loves you, and he'll bring them to that place. Amen. So Jesus is passionate about you. He's passionate about your freedom. He's passionate about setting you free in your circumstances. He is so on fire to see you free. But do you know that you're free? Old man is saying that you ain't free. If we're bound to something, if we're, we're striving towards that victory, God's saying, you ain't got to strive for victory. You are victory. And you have victory because you have Jesus Christ in me. And what you said last week about like the carnal mind and, and what it does and the tricks that it plays and, and where it wants to keep you situated and... And I went back through some stuff and I was like, but it seems like I'm forever sort of repeating myself. And the Holy Spirit just said, look, I want you to share where you are so that others do exactly the same. I believe that this old man mindset has us bound on a daily basis if we're not careful. Just for instance... Yeah, but I've missed the mark and I haven't done it. And 
I feel like I've failed at it. I feel that... See how much emotion is on how I feel and what I think and what I say. Then I ask myself, well, you know, who says those things about ourselves? Well, if we look in the scripture, it says, well, you've put to, to death the old man and the old way of thinking. And now you've taken on new life and a new way of thinking. Okay, well, if I've taken that and how come I'm struggling some days with some of the thoughts that are coming out? How am I struggling with some of the things? Why? It's because your flesh always wants to rise up against the word of God. It always wants to rise up and have a say, make you feel comfortable where you are so that your distance between your relationship with the Father becomes so great that he just chips away and moves you so far away from the kingdom of God that you actually believe the lie that he's putting around you. So I viewed myself, and like before I found out who I was, I couldn't see myself worthy enough. I couldn't see myself able enough. I couldn't see myself that I was ever going to do the works in the kingdom. I was never intelligent enough, and that I wouldn't amount to anything. I thought I had to have like a, a biblical degree. I thought I had to go for a certain amount of Bible study and school. And trust me, like if God wants to use you, it's about He'll use you, and He'll use you with the willingness of the Jesus inside of you, the righteousness of Jesus inside of you. He he's, He loves you because He loves the Jesus inside of you. He loves the fact that you want to do everything that you possibly can for Jesus. He He's looking at that, going, "I love it, I love it, I love it. I, I'm just going to add more and add more." I can't of mind sits there and says, "Well." You know what? Well, that's a family member you're speaking to. So it's going to actually be different. And you can't share like that because you know what happened before. And the last time that you shared, there was a, an eruption and there was a disagreement. And then you, we fell out. Well, if we're never going to talk about it ever between the ones that we need to, whether it's the world or whether it's family, then guess what? And when we're thinking old man style, we're thinking that that is the end result. Well, if we include Jesus in that situation, go, I don't care what it is, how it is, or how it's going to come. Oh, what I want to be able to do is share the kingdom. So whatever you do and you put in there, that I'm just going to be there as that willing vessel. And I just want to see you work. God wants to see himself work through you. And he wants to see the situation change. Why? Because there's an excitement in your spirit that changes. If the excitement in your spirit changes when you wake up in the morning, you know, am I the same as I was yesterday? Am I in the same situation I was yesterday? Or am I actually one step closer to this place where I feel I need to be? I want you to go home today and ask yourselves the same question. I want you to think, am I in the same place I was yesterday or am I a bit further than what I was yesterday? Am I still bound to the lies that have kept me there in that place or am I further? Because freedom comes, what, from hearing the truth? So freedom comes from hearing the truth. Well, God says, well, I'm the way, the truth and the life. So if, if I house truth, then guess what? There can't be anything else that's going on. My full attention is in truth. And his ways. Therefore, I have life in that truth. But do I believe that? Or is it just true? We can understand that my situation, it, it is true. What's going on? It's true. It is. It's not a lie. That's what's going on. But am I bound to that? Which is true? Or I function and work from heavenly places says, this is the truth. That is true what's going on. But this is the truth. This is how it's going to go down. This is how we're going to function. This is how we're going to move. This is how we're going to create. This is how we're going to develop. This is how we're going to speak. This is how we're going to be empowered. This is how we're going to encourage. This is how we're going to do. Sounds a whole lot better than the mess. I can't stand it. I'm stuck, as, I'm stuck at being in this place. I, I, I have give it to you, Lord. 
But have you? Or are you of mid uh, mid uh, mindset? I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, but I still fight from the old man that I put to death when you went into my life. He says, now that I've baptised you in the Holy Spirit, that which is dead, gone, now I've resurrected new life, this is how we walk and function. But now... I still want to function from here. My flesh still wants to function from here because it's safe. It's a safe place. The flesh is telling you that's safe. Everything about your situation is the here. It's old man. Unless we believe that I, I, I know. I know I'm going to see the end result. I know it. I'm already walking in it. And there's nothing that you say that's going to de- determine whether I, I see it or not see it. It doesn't matter how much you shoot me down. This is where I function from. It doesn't matter that you don't like that. This is what God said. That's how strong we are. That's how strong we are with the Spirit. I always built up these walls before I found out who I was. And I realised that I'd just done so much creating of mess and foundation that it wasn't the doctrine that was wrong. Not what, we, not what we get taught here. It was my viewpoint on me. It was my viewpoint on the things of the kingdom. How I thought, if, 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 if I gain this knowledge, if I do this, if I do that, if, if, if I build myself, then I'll be able to do this and this and this. God's saying, you have it, you can do it right now. You just don't see that you can do it and you have it right now. He's empowered us to be able to walk around with the kingdom of God. Who's told us that we haven't got the kingdom of God? Who's told us that we're not empowered to walk and move freely in the kingdom? Who's told us that? It's got to have come from somewhere. And it's the things, and I believe it's the things, the renewing out of our mind that's got to take place. The renewing out of our mind. So who's saying these things about me which which is doing all the control and all the talking? Well, if you look at Ephesians 4.19... And we'll read down so we can get to the gritty. They have become callous and they've given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to the practice of every kind of impurity. That's old man, right? But that's not the way you learn in Christ. Assuming that you've heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, I am the way, the truth and the life, to put your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and be renewed in your spirit of your mind. You've put that to bed. It's gone. It's done. That is it. Period. There ain't no resurrecting of that old man. It's dead. Resurrecting of the life that's out there. That's what we're resurrecting. Not old man. That's gone. The new man, new spirit, new new everything, that new creation is just wandering around saying, all right then, if, if I'm not all of that and all those things that have been said about me, all the things that I see, all those things that are going on, if I'm not that, then what am I? Well, I'm power and I'm authority and I'm kingdom and I've got victory. Why? Because the word of God says it. So you're not like that. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ into your life, what did Jesus go around doing? If you're housing the kingdom of God, if you're housing Jesus Christ in your life, what did Jesus go and do? He went and loved on everybody. He went and loved on them. He went and shown them what the kingdom of God was. He demonstrated. He spoke. He talked. He loved Then, on the other hand, our old man says, yeah, but how can I love that person if they? Do we think that's old thinking or is that new thinking? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but that ain't the kingdom. That ain't what God's got in store for you. I hear what you're saying because your frustration, your anger, your upset, but that ain't the kingdom. This is what the kingdom is. This is what the kingdom of God says. I'll demonstrate it to you. Why? Because I'm empowered by the kingdom to do so. That ain't you. What you go and do, that ain't you. That is just 
Old man thinking. That's picking up old man. But I'm here to encourage you that that is dead. So stop picking it up. Stop putting back on that stuff. It's, it ain't you. You're new life. You're a new creation. You're all the things that Jesus Christ said and walked and did. That's who you are. If he says you're going to go and do great things than him, look at the things that he did. They couldn't even house all the stuff that he did in the library. They can't house that stuff. There's a portion of what he did is in the Bible. A portion. And he says that we're going to go and be empowered to do more. Does that not excite your spirit? Yeah, hang on a minute. But you, you moulded eyes. You raised the dead. The lame walked. And I housed that. Oh, hallelujah. If I housed that, then come on. But it doesn't. Old thinking says, you really think that you're empowered with the kingdom. You really think that you house Jesus Christ to be able to do it. You really think. See the discouragement that's coming from the carnal mind, the old man. The discouragement in your day-to-day business. We can't even go and love on somebody. So now how are we supposed to think that we're going to raise the dead? Or see blind eyes open? Or deaf ears open? Or, or even a broken arm healed? Or pain in the back? Or legs... Go- how can we? How? Am I here? Am I old man? No. I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. I just need to know that I'm there, throne room thinking all the way, 100%, and believe that, and believe that. So it doesn't matter. I see the situations going on, but I know this is to benefit me, and all I've got to do in obedience is lay aside my thinking in obedience to your word, even though that this is a struggle, and do what James 1 says, and find the joy in the good and in the bad. Why? Because your focus, whether it's good or whether it's bad, is always on Jesus. Your focus there becomes partnership with Jesus in good and in bad. So the partnering with Jesus from the start to finish, the Alpha and Omega, if I start with Jesus, the ultimate starting place, the finishing place is what? Jesus. If I think from the old man and go, ah, for all of this, and then halfway through I go, uh, you know what, yeah, Lord, now nah, I'm going to do one of those uh, pity prayers, the wish, I hope, please, Lord. God says you're housed with authority. You don't need to pray like that. You speak it into being. That's who you are. Open your mouth and create out of your mouth will come. Words of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, creation. Why? Because he created it. Why? He's housed in you. Why? Because you'll be able to do it. Why? Because creation lives inside of me. So, what? We're not going to see creation anymore. He can move mountains and do everything. Has he stopped creating things? Has he stopped creating movement around you? Has he stopped creating? Has he stopped doing things? They're still fishing things out, species they've never seen and heard of. Why? Because that's how powerful God is. (laughs) He's the beginning and the end. Start the Alpha and Omega. So do this in your circumstance. Pick the one of, if you've only got one circumstance or one heart's desire, do this. And we'll do it right now. And we're going to pray together, right? And we're going to get this right at the top of the list. Right there. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to write it down. In your own time, write it down. We're going to partner with Jesus right now and then we're going to see the testimony because that's how powerful God is. And if we're still thinking, yeah, but I don't think that's going to happen, guess what? All it is is just a little bit longer until you realise, actually, I speak with authority. I walk with authority. I am kingdom-minded and I do have the power. Therefore, everything that God says right now, it is going to happen. It is going to happen. Why? Because it's already done. He paid the price at the cross. How can it not be done? Is there something that he missed at the cross? Did he forget about your partner? Did he forget about the suffering? Did he forget about the issues? Did he forget about that? Or did he say he did it all and finished it all at the cross? Or did he miss something with you and your friendship or your partnership or your loved ones? Did he miss something right there? Say, Lord, Lord, yeah, but it ain't going to happen for me. 
No, if he's done the works at the cross, that of all, it is complete. It's done. It's our, our thinking that's, that's saying it isn't done. If we can create the foundation of the throne room that says it's done and understand that it's done and know that it's done and then come into agreement that it's done, guess what? It's already done. You just don't see that it's done. Could we walk out onto the street and do a miracle right now? Yes, we could. Do you believe it? Some of you do. Some of you don't. Why? Because you have to see the fruit of it. Why? Because you just don't think the way that the kingdom thinks. That's all it is. You want to be a part of something, yet, but don't fully believe that Jesus is in it 100%. I know that. Why? Because I was there. I've, I've been in that position. I know that. I understand it. The difficulty is, is, is making sure that it's dead. I wasn't dead before I knew who I was. I still function from the midset that I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, but I still wasn't dead to the old man. That's all it was. Now, that don't even come into being. It's all, it's all this. It's all throne room. It's all kingdom. It's Jesus. It's all about him. Let's back this up with Colossians 3.8. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put on the old self with its practices. It's telling you, you are picking up old man if you do any of the above in what? Verse 8? If you're picking those back up, you are functioning and talking from the old, old man mindset. You are. So even if you don't verbally say it and you think it, guess what? You're functioning from the old man still. If you're talking to someone in secret about someone else, about a situation, and you're not finding the glory of God in it and seeing Jesus Christ, guess what? You're thinking from the old man. You're doing everything the word of God's telling you not to do. If you're having a secret session with someone else and thinking that God can't see what's going on, guess what? You're functioning from old man. If you are open and honest and talking and functioning from the place of the throne room, guess what? He already knows because he sees it and he can develop with it and he can grow with it and he can can encourage with it. But if we want to choose to constantly pick up the old man and do what verse 8 is saying, anger, wrath, malice, slander and obscene talk coming from your mouth. I have times where I get frustrated with the kids and I have to jerk the slack in and go, is that old man talking right now or is that new man? I have issues when I'm at work. Is that old man talking or is that new man? If we have issues with one another, is that old man or is that new man? Who's doing the talking? When we slow ourselves down enough before our physical emotions get involved... Our flesh emotions always want to get involved. They always want to dictate. Why? Because you know that's where we live from. We live from the throne room. Our spiritual place, and we have to bring that, which is in heaven, to earth. So even though we're here, and our flesh and emotions are carried with all the senses, it sees devastation, it sees destruction, it sees all the nasty things going on, it sees that I could be hurt through this, it sees and it's waiting for it. Guess what? You're planting a seed. You're planting a seed of negativity around which God has already says, well, don't you want to see victory instead? Why are you planting these thoughts in your mind right now when God has had his victory point is here? He already sees the outcome. He's already upgraded your, your situation. He's already put an outcome on it. Now that's great thinking. That he's already put an attachment at the end that sees the glory of God. Right there. Bang! As soon as you open your mouth and I'm partnering with you. So right now, get that, that thing, whatever's going on right now, get it at the top of your list. And let's do this prayer together. So, Father, right now, and when I pause, that's your gap. Father, right now, in the midst of everything that I'm going through, this specific situation, Father, I want to partner with you today in it and through it. I want to partner with my thoughts and my thinking that it becomes wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the kingdom Because now I understand that my old man in this situation is dead. 
Yet new life and new situations and new thinking comes into being because I've partnered with Jesus. The life, the creation, the one that can, the doer, the one who's able, the one that changes the world and everything around it. That is what I come into agreement with. That your great thinking, your powerful thinking, your awesome thinking already resides in me. Because I partnered with Jesus Christ the moment I asked you to come into my life. And I thank you in advance. And now I'm excited to see the outcome. Now I'm excited to see how you're going to do it. Now I'm excited to see how we're going to do this together. Because my spirit man is going to be so encouraged for my next step and my next journey. Because you're an increaser. And you're an encourager. And you're greater than the works of the enemy. And you're greater than my old man because it's dead. You came to obliterate sin, and that's what you are. I'm not a sinner. You're dealing with my righteousness. Because that's what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. Now let's get tuck in. Now let's start. So, this old self was dictating and having a say of who I was and everything that I was doing, and everything I was up against. I always sin the bad in everything. I always sin the discouragement. I always sin the negativity. I always sin those bad things. And I, I couldn't understand what was going on. I was faced with it and living in it and never being able to see outside of it. I was always trying to work the, the way of the flesh of trying to conquer it with my flesh and, and with me. And, I, and now I understand that ain't even my battle. Ain't even my battle. Yet your flesh and your carnal mind wants to tell you, you've got to go for it, you've got to do it. God says, I've already done it. And now I'm just like sitting in daddy's arms just going, we've done it. Oh, we've done it. Now let's... So the opportunity with Jan's friend was, I'm standing there going, I know something's up. I know something's going on. And old man's going, yeah, but what's Jan going to think? What's she going to say? New man says... Bro, just do it. You know why? Because not only are you going to see something amazing, you're going to give something amazing, she's going to get something amazing. That thinking, that great and powerful thinking, brought it into being, and she says, yeah, it's 50, and I'm like, oh, she's backed up. She's backed me up. Like, she probably don't even realise how much she's just backed me in saying that. My spirit immediately just went, woof. Right, and I'm like, yes, come on, let's do this. I could have allowed the old man to carry on thinking for me and going, come on, I'll just wait for a better opportunity at another time. Like, If we don't experience these situations and take full control of them in the power and authority of Jesus Christ, we are never going to get to see the awesomeness of Jesus. That's already there. It's already there. It's just what we think. It's what we do. It's what we create. Oh, what about if there's an atheist? What about if this? You know, Friday night, I left practice, got in the car, drove down the road, I spotted someone with a sling on, and I jumped out of that car, right? And he stood there like... (laughs) And I could tell by the look on his face that I'm either going to jump him that's how the world thinks, right? And he even said it. He says, man, like, I thought you were going to get out and rob me or something. He was high anyway, but that didn't matter. But why? Because he's turning around and our conversation was like this. So, you go around asking random people, don't you think it makes them feel uncomfortable? would have been like, oh yeah, actually you better shut up and leave it be because obviously he's looking a bit worried and a bit scared and actually what he's saying is it, it could be true. <laughs> what Kingdom Throne really think he's good. Yeah, I know what he's saying is true, but listen to the truth. Listen to the Jesus that's inside of me, right? I didn't get to lay hands on him. I didn't get to pray with him, right? Because he already made the decision up in his mind. He didn't want to because he was high. That's as his words. I'm high, man. I, 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 want, I don't want you to pray for me. I'm high. I said, look, God, don't worry. It doesn't matter whether you're high or not. High. God's still going to do it anyway. We got chatting for about 20 minutes. And it was all about the kingdom. 
It was all about majesty. It was all about... And then I got to drop him off down the road. And I'm sat in the driver's seat going, funny that, about 20 minutes ago, I jumped out of the car. You think I was going to rob you now? I'm giving you a lift. How amazing is God? How amazing is that he can smash every single wall that there is with the, the, that man builds up because that's how awesome he is. And I managed to sit in the car with him and have another conversation for about 20 minutes. He didn't want to leave. He knows where we are. And trust me, from the room think he says, we're going to see him. Old man says, yeah, well, you know, just wasted. No, that's seed, man. If you don't believe you're planting seed, why, is that, why does the word of God says the harvest is now? Who's been planting then if the harvest is now? If we don't believe, why is the harvest right now? That's what the word of God says. Now. It is now. The kingdom is at hand. Now. Right now. And we go, yeah, but the possibilities are, uh, stress says, this is what the word of God says. <clears throat> this is what it's saying to me. I was dragging around a dead weight with a continuous struggle. Everything was a continuous struggle. You know when your kids get to about six or seven and they're flat out on the couch and you know you've got to do that journey upstairs with them and get them into bed and that dead weight, because they're sleeping, is twice the amount of weight as if they're awake. And that's just a small infant. And then, not only that, you've got to hoist them up into the top bunk without them getting clattered on their head or on their knees or anything like that. So you've not got to just work out dragging this body upstairs that's sleeping, but then you've got to get it into the bed with all your might. We all know how difficult it is to carry something for a long period of time. Flesh and the lactic acid. It doesn't take long for it to kick in. And the aches and the pains and everything else. This analogy right here is what we're doing on a day-to-day life with our pain and our struggles. We're picking up death. We're picking it back up and we're walking with it. And we're finding how difficult it is in our situation. But all of a sudden it becomes light and then heavy again and then light and then heavy again because our choice is that we're picking up old man and living out new man, picking up old man, new man, old man, new man. And we find that we don't realise that when it's light it's because we're actually functioning from the right spirit. But then old, it's like, hang on a minute, I don't understand. Yesterday, yesterday was light. Why is it so heavy today? Why? What are you questioning? Who's talking? But we do it. We do do it. You don't believe that it's dead then, if you've got to pick it back up. God's so good. All the time, yeah. But our new nature discovers the voice of the Spirit. It discovers Jesus Christ because he paid the price for it. That's what new man's thinking. How do you see it, Jesus? How do you see the situation, Jesus? How do you want to see the outcome, Jesus? How do you want to be in this, Jesus? How do you want to function in this, Jesus? Because it's all about Jesus. That's the end result. It's all about Jesus. If you include him in it, the beginning and the end, guess what? It is awesome. It's totally awesome because it all becomes about him. So this... And I've been talking about Jan for a couple of years now. And I've just seen God just chip away, chip away at the end. It's it's done. It's done. It's done. If I don't believe that it's done, then he should be finishing something else after the cross. He's finished it at the cross, so it's done. So we've got to dig for that. So now we're empowered to take control, right? Fruits of the Spirit, love. Joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithful to our identity in Jesus. That is who Jesus Christ is. He's faithful. He's faithful to us. He's full of gentleness. And he's empowered us to take control. 
We're empowered to take control of our old self and its emotions that get overwhelmed by the things that are going on in the situations. This is because it's the centre of our thinking. What we see, that's the centre of our... If we replace them with the visuals of Jesus Christ, guess what? You're never going to see the stuff that your flesh sees. You're always going to see what Jesus sees. But we've got to be empowered to do that. Well, how do I get empowered to do that? Well, by getting into the throne room and lock yourself away in the closet and, and talk to Jesus for a bit and just go, okay, I, I, I want to put down my visuals for a minute because... I'm seeing a repeating of walking around this mountain over and over again, I, I, and I don't like it. And I, I seem to get myself into this position where I conquer, and then I've got to go around it, and I conquer, and I've got, I, I just, I, I know it's conquered, and I just want to be in that place where it's conquered, instead of returning back to that mountain to circle it. When it's, it could actually be turning around and saying, well, stop walking around it and go through it. It could be saying that. God say we, you stop tackling it the same way that you used to tackle it and do it this way for a change. Is that, is that brilliant thinking? Is that, is that old man thinking? We've got to question our thinking. God could be just turning around saying, yeah, but I'm not asking you to do this. I want you to do this. Yeah, but I've already done this. So you're rising up against God? Is your flesh wanting to dictate and tell God how to do his job? It's got to be good thinking. It's got to be Jesus thinking. It's got to be throne room thinking because that's what empowers us to do. But if we only see what's in front of us, we're not seeing the end result of what Jesus has already got for us. Man, he's so good. We have a choice. Is it going to be at the forefront of our thinking or not? New, new self says no longer it has residence or position or power because my new self knows it has victory. It's not striving for it anymore because I have it. It's full of fruit of the spirit of Jesus and he's already paid the price for it. And our standing empowers us. The passion of Jesus Christ in us, our emotions become full of Jesus. Everything about it becomes Jesus. Everything is Jesus. All it is is that our flesh, our our old man has decided to just pick it back up and let us feel comfortable that, yeah, I'm all right to be like this. You know what, I'm, I'm actually okay that I'm angry in it as well. And I'm going to stay there for a bit because that's how I feel. Jesus Christ turns around and says, yeah, that may be how you feel, but that's not who you are. I haven't created that. I haven't created that. You go, ah. Yeah, but I can back it up with the scriptures as well, Lord. And that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to back it up. Because you said, back it up with the word of God. Well, here's the word of God. You know, if we're not careful, we can back everything, everything with the word of God. But is that what Jesus Christ is saying in it? Is that what he wants from you? Is that what he wants your obedience to be about? Because we know when we're like that and in that state, is our old man dictate. He loves the fact that I feel good about myself. And I feel good about the things around me because the expectation of seeing the Father rather than the old self. And in Jesus, we have the power to change things. Every negative has an unbelievable attachment of Jesus Christ. And the way that Jesus thinks is the most powerful way of thinking ever. So why did I ever think that I thought it was going to be anything different when I was thinking this stuff? We're citizens of heaven, therefore you are empowered with the most powerful way of thinking ever because of your new creation. You are empowered because Jesus inside of you is empowered. If you want to do a little bit of studying, find out who Jesus is, that's who you are. That is who you are. Not a failure, not that you've missed the mark, not that you've done this, not that you've done that. Why? Because that's old. And that's gone. It's already dead. This is victory talking. You see, you're empowered, man. Like, everything from right now, it's done. It's changed. Believe that. Will we do that? Can we do that with one another? Is it cheap talk? So, Father, we just thank you right now that you are a new creation and you have changed the way that I think from this day forward. And I know that the enemy just comes back and he tries to entice me. He comes back for a more opportune moment. That's all it is. But 
I'm empowered with the kingdom to recognise it. I'm empowered by the kingdom to stretch forth the word of God right over it, through it, in the midst of it. And I know Jesus is full control over it. My flesh wants to rise up against the word. What is that enmity against Jesus Christ? And I know I won't stand for the old man that wants to rise up. I stand for the kingdom. I stand for the righteousness. And I you that you have empowered me and I thank you that you reminded me today how empowered I actually am and how encouraged that I actually am in my circumstances and I thank you Father that you have reminded me today that I should be encouraged for who I am and I should be encouraged for the way that you made me and I should be encouraged that I am empowered to walk in the kingdom and I am going to see victory in it and that which I already declared and partnered with, with you is already done and I thank you for that in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen.